everybody. We are going to get started today on lesson 2-2. Two -two. This is our second lesson of topic 2. And we're going to be looking today at our essential question is, how can, I, how can I plot, compare, and order rational numbers using a number line? So the big part here for today is using a number line. We're going to be showing all of our thinking on a number line. Okay. So the other things we need to think about is plotting. Plotting means I'm putting a point on a number line. Comparing means I'm looking at the value of the numbers and seeing which one is greater, which one is less. And then ordering, putting one from least to greatest, greatest to least, and so forth. Okay, in this first one, what we need to talk about is our first, um, our first vocabulary term, which is a rational number. Any number that can be written as the quotient of two integers is called a rational number. A rational number can be written in the form a over b or negative a over b, where a and b are integers and b does not equal zero. A rational number, and this is the important part here, can be a whole number, a fraction, or a decimal. It can be any one of those things. Okay, so the question that we're looking at today, our first one, is how can you find and position negative four-thirds and negative one-and-a-half on a number line? So there's two ways to do it. So what we can do is we can... Um, we're not comparing them, so we just need to find them on a number line. So we can do two separate number lines here. Sorry, I have a little mark here. Okay, so we're, it's not asking us to compare them, so they can be on two different number lines. I'm going to put them on their separate number lines, and then I'll combine them on one. So I'm going to use a, a vertical number line when I compare them, but for now, we're just going to start with a horizontal number line for four thirds. Ooh, sorry about that. Getting crazy over here. And a horizontal one for negative one and a half. So uh, when I have my number lines, I'm going to start by placing zero. That helps me to determine the positive side and the negative side. And in this case, four thirds here is negative. So it's going to be on this side of the number line. So I need to think about what is four thirds? Either I can write this as a decimal or I can write it as a fraction. For me, my brain loves fractions, so I'm going to show you a fraction way. Okay, so let's see, we have negative four thirds. That's an improper fraction because our numerator is greater than our denominator. It tells us that there's more than one whole hiding in there. So we'll start off by pulling out as many whole numbers as we can. And in this case, we can only pull out one three third. And what's left is one third. So this becomes negative one and one third. So on my number line right here, I'm going to place negative one and negative two. So I know that it's negative one and one third. The denominator tells me how many parts are in each hole. So I can go like this. And that does, I'm just kidding. We're gonna do, we'll do three. Three, okay? So I know that it's one, so I need to get to one, and one third right here. Negative one and one third. So we're gonna plot that right there, and that becomes negative one and one third. Now for the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have a negative one and a negative two. But instead, we have a decimal. This one's pretty doable, it's one and a half, right? So 1.5 is the same as one and a half. I can also do that as a fraction. Here's half, half. And then we're gonna go through here's one and a half. Okay, so that's negative 1.5 right there. Okay, so we've placed our numbers on a number line. You can either do it with fractions or a decimal. Um, when you have two separate kinds, it's important to make it one way if you're ordering them. Um, but this one, we're just finding their spots. So that works. I'm going to erase this guy real quick, and then we can combine it on a vertical number line. So if I have a vertical number line, I'm going to put zero right here. Oops. Zero right here, because that tells me where positive and negative are located. Here's negative one. 
and here's negative 2. Both of my answers are above 1 whole, but less than negative 2, so they're going to be somewhere in here. I know that 1 and a half is right here, so this would be negative 1 and a half. And then I can see on my graph here, this number is not quite halfway. If you can see if I'm comparing, it's not quite halfway. So we'll do this one as negative 4 thirds. Okay. All right, looking at our next one, it says, how can you find in position 5 fourths and negative 5 fourths and negative 1 and 75 hundredths on the number line? Write negative 5 fourths and negative 1 and 75 hundredths as mixed numbers and plot the points on a number line. So this one helps us out and tells us that we need to write them as mixed numbers. Okay, so let's think about it. One's already a fraction, let's start with that one. Okay, so if I have 5 fourths, negative 5 fourths, okay, I need to pull out as many fourths as I can, which would be 1, which is 4 fourths, and what's left is 1 fourth, so I would end up with negative 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, and I just pulled my little guys right up here because I didn't have enough room. Okay, so this one is the same as negative one and one fourth. Now this guy is a decimal. So how in the world am I gonna do a decimal? Hmm, well, there's two ways. So everything to the left of a decimal point is a whole number. So I already can see that I'm gonna have a negative whole number one. And then my fraction is what's to the left or to the right of the decimal. So to the right of the decimal, I can read that as 75 hundredths. So negative 1 and 75 hundredths. I could leave it like that, but I also can reduce it. I know that 25 can go into 75, and it can also go into 100. So I can reduce it to be 1 and 3 fourths. Okay? So now that they look like friendly fractions, they're both the same type of number. This one's a fraction and this one was a decimal. Now they're both fractions represented as mixed numbers. We're ready to plot it. Okay, our number line is already here in the negatives. One and three fourths is going to be greater than one over here, and one and one fourth is also going to be greater. I'm also noticing that there's fourths in both of these, which is fantastic. That means I can split my number line into fourths, and that makes it much easier to count. So I'm going to go do this one. So negative one and one fourth. Okay, and then the next one, negative one and three fourths. One, two, three. And that's all there is to it, my friends. It says why, so now this convinced me, it says why is it helpful to rename 5 fourths, negative 5 fourths and negative 75, 1 and 75 hundredths as mixed numbers when plotting the points? Well, it's helpful because we can compare them when they look the same. When they're different, we're not quite sure what the value is. But when they both have something in common, like their fraction over here, it's easier for us to order it. All right, compare and order rational numbers. Haru was asked to compare and order three rational numbers. Show how he can use less than, greater than, or equal to to compare two thirds, one, 75, one and 75 hundredths, and negative 75 hundredths. So what we can do here is I see that two out of the three are decimals. So instead of trying to make these decimals into fractions, why don't we just change this guy into a decimal? So let's start with that. We'll do 2 divided by 3. Can 3 go into 2? No, it cannot. So we're going to annex the 0 by placing a decimal. 3 goes into 20 how many times? Well, let's see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 18 is about as close as we're going to get with 2 remaining. Annex yourself another 0. Oops, sorry. And we know that's going to keep on going. So it's 0.66 repeater. Okay. So now I can compare these numbers. 
I'm going to go ahead and make myself a number line. Okay, and I'm going to put my zero. The zero helps me determine where my positives are and where my negatives are. Okay, and sometimes I like to make a little note for myself. Here's negatives, here's positives, okay? And then we know we're going one, two. We don't have any numbers greater than two, so it's okay to label it to just two and negative two. And now we can go ahead and start placing our numbers, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, I always like to start by doing the positive numbers, okay? So my positive numbers, I have 0.66. So like I said in the last problem, anything that's left of the decimal is a whole number. If it doesn't have anything over here, it's not a whole number, which means it's less than one. So here's one, it's gonna be less than one. And when I think about 66 hundredths, that's kind of close to 50 hundredths, which is half, but it's a little more. So when I'm thinking about plotting it, it's good. Here's half, but I know it's going to be a little bit more. So maybe you're about right there. So there's 0.66. Okay. Then our next one, so I've already done that one. That one's done, is 1.75. So again, whole number. So it's going to be greater than 1. And then 0 0.75. 0 0.75 is bigger than 50, which is about halfway but not quite two. So we can say it's about right here. One and 75 hundredths, okay? And then finally, our last one is our negative 75 hundredths. So again, right here, I have nothing next to the decimal, so it's not a whole number, and then a fraction. So I know it's gonna be less than one, but it's bigger than half, so I know it's gonna be probably about right here. So I'll just go ahead and plot that, negative 0.75. Okay, and now that I've placed everything, I can go ahead and use symbols to compare them. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to order them from least to greatest. So let's see. Let me use a different color here. So least to greatest. So I know when I'm looking at a number line, least means I'm going to go furthest over here to greatest over here. So I'm going to start with point seven, negative 0 0.75. Negative 0 0.75 is less than what? 0 0.66 is less than 1.75. I can also read that backwards. 1.75 is greater than 0 0.66, which is greater than negative 0.75. Okay. Yay! Okay, our next one, at 10 p.m. one winter night, the temperature was negative three degrees Celsius. At midnight, the temperature was negative seven degrees Celsius. Use greater than, less than, sorry, less than, greater than, or equal to compare the two temperatures and explain the relationship. So typically when we're talking about temperature, we're going to use a vertical number line, okay? Because it kind of looks like a thermometer. So I'll start by placing my zero. And then we need to find our spots here. So I see that it goes at least up to negative seven. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll just go to ten. Okay, and these are all negative numbers, right? These are the negatives. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our number, negative three. So one, two, three. And then our next one is negative seven. So we'll go negative four, five, six, seven. Okay, now we're going to compare them. So I know the further I go away from zero, the smaller my number is going to be or the colder my temperatures are going to get. So the closer I get to zero, the warmer I get. So this one is cold. So negative seven is less than, because it's further away from zero, negative three. All right. The other way I like to write it, which blew my mind, is putting your two values. Which one is greater? Well, this one's closer to zero, so I'm gonna put two dots, one dot next to the smaller one, and that helps us build our inequality sign. Okay, 
Then we have some problems here. Um, this one, you can stop watching the video, but if you would like to keep looking at some, some problems here, we'll just do these real quick. So we're going to find the number at each point. So A, I can see it's going to be on the negative side. So I can go ahead and write negative. Okay, but it's not quite one yet. So I'm going to look and see how many is it partitioned into? One, two, three, four. So it's going to be fourths. And I see that it's at two fourths. So negative two fourths or negative half. That's fine. Either one is fine. We've got to make sure we put the negative there because it's on the negative side of the number line. Now looking at B, it's on the positive side of the number line, so it's going to be a positive number. It also isn't quite one yet, so I know it's going to be a fraction. Here's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So here we have three fourths. Now on the last one, letter C, here's zero. So it's going to be negative, so let's count, negative one whole, so it's getting to one whole, and then remember I'm counting by fourths, so one whole, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So I have negative one and three fourths. Ta-da! Last one that we're going to look at is we're going to order them from least to greatest. So this one is going to be, I think, where we have the challenge. I know a lot of people just like to order the numbers, but placing them on the line, plotting them on the line, is where we get into some trouble here. Okay, so I need to think about first, some of these are mixed numbers, uh, or some of them are mixed numbers, some of them are improper fractions, and some of them are decimals. So how can I write this? Um, I like fractions. Again, I'm gonna tell you I like fractions. So I can change these really quick. 1 and 25 hundredths, and that's the same as 1 and 1 fourth, okay? So this one's 1 and 1 fourth. This one we can make into a mixed number by pulling that out, right? So we have 1 whole with 1 left, so this is negative 1 and a half, okay? And then we can do this next one, which is just this number, but negative. And then finally, a positive one and one half. Okay, so I'm going to start by placing, where's one and one fourth? Here's one and one fourth. Okay, then we'll do the next one, negative one and a half. Negative one and halfway in between there is right there. Negative one and a half, okay? Then we're going to do negative one and one fourth. Negative one and one fourth. Okay? And then finally, one and one half. Positive one and one half. Now, all these lovely things are in an order, and I know that anything over here is going least to greatest or greatest to least. In this case, it says least to greatest. So now, I don't even have to write any of this. I just have to look at my number line and then put down what I had in order. So I'll do that, and we'll just do that in black. So starting over on the left, we have negative one and one half, negative one and one fourth, then we're going to go over to the next number, which is 1 and 1 fourth, and then 1 and 1 half. And that's all there is to it, guys. All right. Um, hopefully this was helpful. I will help you in class when we get to it. So please let me know what you need.